Okay, everybody, here's a <clears throat> couple products you can use that are uh, non-toxic and they're supposed to be safe around pets or whatever. I mean, as long as you don't want to ingest any of them. I still wear, you know, like something protective when I do spray just because it's an ease for my mind. But here's a couple products. I'll show you what they are. First one is Captain Jack's Dead Bug. And it's a concentrate. It contains spinosad. So that's that's one treatment option. This is supposed to battle most of the mites, thrips, and everything you may encounter as a pest. But like part of your IPM, your integrated pest management system, you want to have at least two or three or if not more, you know, different variables you can use as con to control them. Here's another one. This one's called a uh, green cleaner. And it's supposed to it's supposed to treat powdery powdery mildew too, but I don't know if I would trust anything with powdery mildew, but I guess as long as you're not in late flower stage and you can control it because once you get that stuff it really spreads, but but yeah, it's you can use this as a a fol a foliar spray or however you want. I mean, I, I don't really use it as a root drench because it doesn't say anything about that. But this is one that thing that I implement when I do my clones. I do a, uh, I plant, or I dunk the whole clone in the solution once I, once I mix it up. And it's concentrated too. Both these products you want to shake well before you use them and again while you're spraying. But this, this stuff here, this is uh, this this Captain Jack's dead bug that I was telling you about. You can uh, you can use that as a root drench too and water it into your plants. But I'd be very very careful doing that because I'm gonna, as I'm going to show you later when we go out to the plants. Um, but it, I might have got it a little uh, too concentrated when I mixed it in with my water. But uh, it did. It burnt my plants. It burnt them pretty good. So it's pretty disappointed when I saw that this morning. But uh, I'll take you out in a little bit here and show you what it did to my plants. So I'm probably going to have to do a, a flush on my, on my plants in the cocoa with a light nutrient solution. And, uh, you know, try to see what I can do. Hopefully I can, you know, fix the problem. But I guess you live and you learn there. But... Be very careful when you're adding stuff to your plants. I got overzealous and I think I got too concentrated and I did burn my plants so as I'll show you in a little bit. But anywho, uh, a couple products you can implement into your IPM along with uh, these are the non-toxic solutions. I don't know per se if you could say they're organic because uh, anything you spray on your plants you know it's has a possibility you know of negative effects like I'm gonna show you here in a little bit but I know you just gotta be careful pests suck but uh you know you gotta do your best to battle them they have other products like Azimax and a bunch of other stuff but I don't wanna really use anything that's toxic I uh would rather hold off on all that I mean I already uh hate having pests in the first place but but yeah this is what I'm treating my uh, uh, thrips with and uh, I haven't after I treated them this is uh, I've done first, the first treatment I did with the green cleaner when they were clones and then I did one again full plant dunk into this um, this did not uh, eradicate the whole problem because remember thrips have a life cycle and they, they lay the eggs, then they have their nymph stage, and then their adult stage, and in between stages. Uh, each stage may have to be treated differently with a different product. So you want to do, you know, your treatment, spread them out every few days. 
I'd say at least two or three treatments, you know, and keep checking. What I would check with, this is very handy and it's very cheap. You can get them for under 10 bucks online. It's just, all this is, is a, a 60 times uh, jeweler's loop and it magnifies pretty good. Probably can't even see, but I'll try to show you. Yeah, it does a excellent job. You can see, you can see stuff very, very, very well with this. But yeah, it's a grower's tool that's very, very cheap, and it helps you uh, prevent. Well, doesn't help prevent, but you definitely can spot things sooner with one of these, and you can check your trichomes later with them too. They're very handy. Another thing that you may use if you choose to. I mean, if you have bigger plants, you're going to have to use an atomizer, but this is just an old garden, you know, a cheapy garden sprayer. You can get it in any uh, hardware store or big box store. Chad, these are cheap too. I think I don't even give for 10 bucks, maybe cheaper. But yeah, they're, this right here really helps you get into the crevices and the cracks and down in the leaves and everywhere. But yeah, that's a handy tool to have. I uh, You can use a squirt bottle if you want, but I don't think you're going to get it. Uh, as well coverage as you would with one of these and you can adjust the The sprayer adjusts so you can get different control with it works well Another thing when I'm mixing up small batches because this stuff's concentrated. I just use like a jar And this is a quart jar and if you see on there There's one cup one and a half two cups two and a half cups and three cups and it also has milliliters on this side. So yeah, if you want to mix up a smaller batch like this for the spray bottle, I'll use 64 uh, ounces because this also has ounces on it. But yeah, I use uh, 64 ounces for this, and these this right here gets mixed up by the tablespoon. But yeah, it works really well to do that. Uh, when I apply everything, I just use. I basically, uh, this isn't really uh, drinking water. Well, it is, but it's tap water that I just dechlorinated. I just leave leave the lid off for 24 hours and works well. But these are a few things you can do to implement the IPM in your gardens. I uh, just wanted to show you how I do it in mine. And, uh, I mean, there's lots of options. I'm not telling you this is the only way to do it. This is for anybody that's curious or they haven't bottled or battled this problem before. Uh, so maybe this will help you out a little bit because I also want to show you what the effects can be if you go overboard with it. So I am all about that. Anything that happens to my garden, it's like an open book to you guys. I'm going to show you what happened. So I never, I'll be honest with you, I haven't really never had a pest problem in the past. I just, uh, kind of just implement the sprays and this not I've never had to use a root drench mind you and I was reading up on thrips and other pests and they actually fall down into your medium and they nest in there and that's where basically they live for a while part of their life cycle so you could treat your leaves all you want and you're still gonna have a problem when they come back out of your medium but that's just a little piece of info um, for all of you out there that do other methods and you have info definitely drop it down below in the comments I mean this is a a great topic for you know anybody learning to grow and if I mean it's not if you know it's probably when you're gonna have a problem especially if you bring any uh, stranger danger in like cl clones from dispensaries or like in my case I, br I, ha I mostly run cocoa but I brought in Fox Farms Ocean Forest soil that I had sitting outside all summer and uh, uh, it caused a problem. It caused the thrips were in the soil. So it infected my whole, it infected all my plants. I mean, by the time you notice the nymphs or any problem, I mean, you're already, once you see one, you uh, have a problem. So, but like I said, I, I haven't seen any in a few days, but I'm, I'm keeping an eye out. So, but other than that, um, that's some of the products you can use if you choose to if you use something else let me know down below how it works out for you and how you treat with your okay 
everybody uh, we're out in the garden now uh, we're gonna just let me move this around here a little bit but yeah we're gonna I want to show you guys these plants um, the full the foliar spray I'm pretty sure didn't hurt them at all because the plants were fully dry when I stuck them under the lights uh, I'm pretty sure it's from the root drench. It's not a nutrient problem because as you can see, I'll show you what it looks like here real quick. See that on that leaf? If you look around, even that plant back there, But yeah, that's uh, what I wanted to show you guys. I'm pretty sure I got uh, too much uh, concentration when I mixed up my root drench. But this is the cocoa, as you can see. And for anybody that thinks that it's nutrient burn, it's not nutrient burn, uh, for one thing. Uh, that's cocoa, and this is soil. And this has nothing but the nutrients in the soil that came with it. It's Fox Farms Ocean Forest, but it's like three weeks old, so there's no nutrients really left in it because it's ready to transplant. Uh, I haven't transplanted yet because I've been trying to treat this thrip problem before I go to my five gallon final pots because it's a lot easier to treat in uh, the smaller pots in my opinion. I mean, but yeah, that's the difference. But as you can see, even the ones, uh, I had no problems whatsoever. No deficiencies, anything, until I did this root, this root drench. And, uh, what would I go, uh, shoot, I think I went four tablespoons to the gallon, so I think I overdid it. Uh, actually pretty sure I did for the root drench. Uh, like I said, I don't really do, I haven't really done any many root drenches, so some of you, uh, more experienced guys down there that use this stuff quite a bit more than I have to. Go ahead and drop it down below for the information for myself and others, you know. But yeah, I, I can't believe it, I mean, but we'll just move on from here. I mean, if I have to, I'll just take clones and uh, move on. Just take some clones. I'm going to just watch them and monitor them. That's all you can really do and see how they do. But I am going to give them a light flush. <laughs> So, but yeah, that's it's causing necrosis in these leaves. Look at that. But I don't really see anything affecting the new growth or the newer growth. I mean, this is only hap this is a uh, happened in two days. I mean, this is the effect this stuff can have in two days on your plants. But yeah, that's where I'm at with that. I wanted to show you all that. See if many uh, see if others have had that problem using root drenches with any products like Azimax. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can use a root, root drench and um, Spinosad, Spinosid, however you you want to pronounce it. It's spelt Spinosad, but I'm pretty sure it's Spinosid. But anyways, apples to oranges. But anyways, that's where I'm at with this. I uh, was planning on doing this IPM video for anybody that was interested in it. Like I said, this is for the newer the newer growers and the people that never heard of IPM or have a pest problem and they're trying to control it. So um if you're there's a lots more people way more experienced than me about this, but I just wanted to do a video for my series and my subscribers. So you know I'm not a rocket scientist when it comes to it, but I'm definitely trying to help you and others that need help. So, other than that, I just wanted to show you uh, what's going on, you know, with this. I, I, uh, on my board here, I, uh, I spotted uh, the thrips. When did I spot those? Oh, 9.13. And uh, on 9.14, I took the entire plant in a five-gallon bucket and dunked the whole entire plant in there. 
minus the roots. I, I, I stuck a trash bag over the roots wrapped around the stem, dunked the whole, uh, the foliar, you know, all the leaves and all that down in the drench. And then uh, uh, 918, so I guess it was like three days ago, uh, I did this, the Spinosad uh, foliar spray and the, the root drench. And I did a prevention lollipop on everything, you know. But yeah, that's, I've kind of just been tracking this whole movement with this, this pest problem. Like I said, I got it from bringing this fox farms in down here. And they were pest free before then, but you know, it, it, it happens. So that's where I'm at with that. Another thing I was going to tell anybody that is curious about thrips or any other pests, you know, pull a bottom leaf or you don't even have to pull the leaves. Take your jeweler's loop or your microscope. If you have a microscope, you're going to have to pull the leaf off. But anyways, if you flip these over and you get to really looking down in these veins, they'll look like little tiny maggots crawling on there, at least for the thrips. Or uh, like in the beginning, the classification of the life cycle, you can check that too. But but also, uh, there'll be black specks on the underside of your leaves, and that's the feces from the thrips. So it's a you know a, a good way to tell too. But uh, they'll also get a silvery appearance to the leaves. I don't know, the, it look like you almost got like a salt solution on your leaves or it'll be shiny kind of. But yeah, that's what it'll look like. I don't have any leaves like that right now because like I said, I treated everything, but, but other than that, that's what I wanted to show everybody. Uh, today I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and give these a light flush like I said with a light nutrient solution for the cocoa probably just flush out that soil because I'm going to transplant it if not today probably be tomorrow you know so let the medium dry out a little bit but uh, I'll continue to show you guys just keep watching in my series and we'll see how these plants do see if they live or if I have to clone them or what happens with them uh, I'll uh, like I said be transplanting into five gallons soon but other than that I just wanted to do a this video to show people some of the problems you can run into and maybe some of the fixes. I mean, they may not work for every single pest or every single person because a lot of these pests, you know, can become immune to things. That's why you have an IPM. You use a few different, few different products and, and rotate them so that, you know, they don't get used to one thing, you know. But, yeah, whether it's two pot, the two spotted spider mite, thrips, uh, the uh, white flies, gnats, whatever, you know, whatever you may encounter. But this one here, uh, I just wanted to focus on the thrips because I ran into them and for anyone that was curious. But other than that, uh, I really appreciate you guys watching and uh, please like and subscribe and uh, until next time, peace.